Y'all need to get on this drama because it looks like there is more drama going on in Wendy Williams' family because Wendy's son, Kevin Jr., just came out to talk about how Wendy has been treated by his dad, Kevin Sr., for years. Even though Wendy and Kevin have been divorced for almost five years now, Jr. claims that his father is still trying his best to get into Wendy's pockets and keep using her to finance his lifestyle. Y'all remember how Jr. and Kevin Sr. got into a fight a couple of years ago because Jr. found out about his father's master plan to manipulate Wendy for her money? Well, that hasn't changed because Junior just came out to drag Kevin Sr. And y'all, he did not hold anything back. It looks like Junior is ready for war and he did not come to play with his dad. Okay, so it looks like there are a lot of people who are against Kevin Hunter and are showing their support to Wendy Williams. And one of them is their son, Kevin Hunter Jr. And I'm just gonna call the son Junior so y'all don't get the two Kevins mixed up. Kevin and Wendy got married in 1999 and they were married until Kevin messed things up and got his side piece, Sharina Hudson, pregnant. Now, Wendy had always known about his affair with Sharina, and she was willing to turn a blind eye to the affair as long as he didn't get Sharina knocked up, but he did, and that was the end of their marriage. In the 20 years that they were married, and in 2000, they had a son together, who they named Junior. According to reports, Junior has always known about how his dad treated his mom, which isn't surprising because he was there when it was all going down, and contrary to what a lot of people think, kids are super smart and they know what's going on in the family, even without being told by a parent. Plus, Junior was 19 at the time his parents split because his dad got Sharina pregnant, so he wasn't a kid, and he for sure knew what was going on because the media couldn't stop talking about it. He saw everything, including how his Wendy played Kevin and got some petty revenge against him. Kevin revealed that Wendy had played him by making him divorced and unemployed all in a single day. He said, When the news was out, I told her I would step down from the show, and Wendy told me I need to stay because I was having a kid. I stayed only to later be lined up. I got fired from management, served divorce papers, and also fired from the show all in the same day. Day. Wendy definitely enjoyed doing this, and she revealed so in an interview. And to this day, it still is forever. Doesn't mean I love you. Not like that. I glued the mailbox closed <laughs> with the Gorilla Glue and having a good old time in my own head saying, all right, Wendy, you've always been strong. Girl, this is your time. You gotta get this mess together. During their marriage, Wendy was the one who paid the bills. Even worse, Kevin and Sharina were living off her because Kevin was spending Wendy's hard-earned money to finance his affair with Sharina, buying her fancy cars and a house and setting up multiple businesses for her, all of which failed. After Wendy left him, people were expecting him to get another job because he always claimed that he made Wendy what she was, so one would think that he would just do it again, right? Wrong. Rather than pulling out his resume and getting a job, he decided that he was just gonna go after Wendy and have her finance his life for as long as possible by having her pay him alimony even though he was the one who cheated. What's even weirder, he asked Wendy to pay him child support even though their son was a legal adult at the time. Junior was on his mom's side here and insiders claimed that Junior felt a type of way about his dad asking for alimony and child support, making it super obvious that he was only after the money. He felt like it was tacky and classless and he felt embarrassed by his father's behavior. Things got so bad between them that they even got into a physical fight about it, with Kevin Sr. claiming that Wendy had been brainwashing their son. The fight was so bad and so messy that Junior got arrested for it. So things looked good for Wendy for a while, but her fun was short-lived because a couple of months later, she began experiencing health issues, ultimately leading to the cancellation of her show. Back in 2021, Wendy had to step back from the promotional campaign for the upcoming season of The Wendy Williams Show. Fans were a bit concerned, but hey, everyone gets sick sometimes, right? Plus, Wendy assured everyone that she'd be at the premiere of the new season, so fans didn't worry too much. Then things took a nosedive when Wendy canceled her appearance at the show's premiere, claiming that she was doctor's advice due to complications with her Graves' disease. As if that wasn't enough, she also contracted COVID-19, further worsening her health problems. Rumors swirled that she was admitted to a psychiatric hospital due to mental health issues. Then, Tasha Kay weighed in, alleging that Wendy Williams was struggling with early-onset dementia. She went further to claim that Wendy was residing in a safe house rather than her Manhattan apartment. Here's what Tasha Kay had to say. Wendy done. Wendy done. Wendy is done. And I don't like to say this. And she has early stages of uh, uh, dementia. Apart from the claims of dementia, let's also talk about Tasha Kay's claim that Wendy lost all blood flow to the bottom of her legs and her feet so she can only move around in a wheelchair. 
Now, she has lost all blood circulation to the bottom uh, of her legs and her feet, so she can't walk. He said, we haven't had any alerts like that, and I haven't seen anything like that or have had conversations with her that would lead me to believe that. We routinely go up and check on Wendy, so no, we don't have any concerns concerning her mental state. It's all physical. But a few weeks after this, an article by The Sun came out that kind of painted Wendy's mental health in a bad state and hinted that her family was trying to cover up her real issues. The Sun wrote, According to sources, Wendy's manager was summoned to her penthouse apartment after she had appeared unwell during a Zoom show taping earlier in the week. Her manager and a small group of confidants arrived at the host's home to lend support to the struggling talk show queen. Multiple sources reported that Wendy had been found undressed in her room, engaging in inappropriate behavior while shouting explicit comments. Shocked eyewitnesses immediately contacted healthcare workers. When medical personnel arrived, Wendy allegedly became even more aggressive. She was subsequently transported to the hospital, where she remained for several weeks. Things weren't looking great for Wendy for a while. With her declining physical health and this incident, matters quickly went from bad to worse. Throughout an entire season, the producers of her show tried to keep things afloat, bringing in guest hosts to fill her spot. But by the season's end, it was evident that Wendy wouldn't be returning, and the show got the axe. Wendy's situation continued to deteriorate, and reports indicated that she checked into a wellness center for treatment. She was away for quite some time, and there was radio silence from her camp. When she finally resurfaced, sources claimed that those around her were pushing her to jump back into work. They were really pushing for her to find a new TV gig, maybe even reality TV or anything she could get even though she wasn't in peak mental and physical health yet. But they weren't doing it because they cared about her, but because they wanted to profit off her. If Wendt wasn't working, she wasn't making money, and they couldn't have this, so they put pressure on her to find new work, even though she was in no state to work, and they should have been encouraging her to focus on getting better instead. Junior finally spoke out about this, and he confirmed that his mom was being used and manipulated by people who didn't have her best interests at heart. In an interview with The Sun claimed that she was being manipulated by people around her who should have been protecting her, and in the interview he said, I know there are all sorts of things happening that I know in her right mind she would never agree to. As hard as it is seeing her being taken advantage of, I know that if I'm making sure she, as a person, is okay, that is the important thing. So it's clear that Junior loves his mom very much, and he's pained to see how she's being manipulated and taken advantage of. He said, what's been made more important by the people around her is that while her health may not be great, she needs to keep on earning income. And in my opinion, that should not be a priority at all. And whoever has been hired, they are taking advantage of someone who needs to get better. He also claimed that people were taking advantage of her drinking, saying there are a lot of people who are very aware that there is an issue with her drinking and how that issue may be helped. But I think these people are taking advantage of it while allowing it to play out to make it look like they aren't causing the issue. If they aren't preventing it, they are definitely enabling a type of personality and giving her the green light to drink. This wasn't the first time someone called out those around Wendy for enabling her self-destructive behaviors just for their own gain. DJ Booth spilled the tea on this back in 2020. You see, in 2020, DJ Booth dipped out of the Wendy Williams show without giving any explanation, leaving fans wondering if he had been fired or had just fallen out with the producers. For those not in the loop, DJ Booth had been the show's DJ for a long time, so his sudden departure raised eyebrows. We later found out that he left because he couldn't stand watching the producers and managers stand by while Wendy went downhill without making any effort to help her. A fan commented on Instagram and said, Wendy, you need to stop your show and seriously get help. Your camp is just watching you spiral instead of sending help. Shame on them. Another fan commented on this and said, she don't listen to them. Probably why DJ Booth left the show. Now DJ Booth himself replied to this fan and said, yup, exactly, and it will all come out. Y'all have no idea what's really going on and everyone there is afraid to speak up because they don't want to lose their jobs. This is going to play out bad. I feel sorry for the workers and victims. Have a blessed day. So unfortunately, Wendy didn't surround herself with people who had her best interests at heart and it made things even more difficult. But after a while, she appeared to be doing better and even claimed that she was open to falling in love again. I can't wait to fall in love. Okay. Now, I'm serious about that. You know, it's not enough that I sit home by myself at 58 years old. I can't wait to fall in love. Yeah. And I don't want to get married. I want him to have already had kids. Mm. I want him to be someplace between, someplace around my age. You know, maybe 10 right. years younger than me and maybe 15 years older than me. Okay.
Things were finally starting to look up for her, and a couple of months later, she announced that she was going to be launching a podcast that was going to be filming at her apartment in New York. We were excited for this until a source claimed that there was no podcast in the works. The source said, there is no podcast. It's strange because she is saying there is no podcast, but is also telling people she's going to return to TV. It's hard to figure out what is based in reality. Allegedly, her sponsors had decided to pull out at the last minute, and this led Wendy into another session of binge drinking. According to Page Six, she drank her way from Fresco by Scotto in New York City all the way to Gay Bar, the townhouse. Naughty But Nice podcast host Rob Shooter also revealed how it all went down, saying, We had a bite, we had some drinks, but then when we were getting ready to say goodbye, Wendy didn't really want us to leave. He then claimed that Wendy brought up the idea of going to the bar, the townhouse, for more drinks. Another witness who was present at the scene pretty much confirmed Rob's claim, saying, She kept saying she wanted to get drunk tonight, she wasn't hiding her drinking. However, her publicist put a different spin on this and said, Apparently, Wendy went out celebrating the new things in her life. She is bringing in Wendy 2.0. She is happy and excited for her new opportunities and zest for life. There are a lot of new things in the works and Wendy was celebrating. This statement helped to switch things up and helped people see the situation in a different light and helped paint the narrative that her life was going great. But then we heard that Wendy had gotten so broke that she was selling off her belongings to raise money. Several news sources reported that Wendy has been calling people asking them to help sell all her stuff. She is asking for recommendations on places that can sell furniture for you. The insider added that in her preparation for her move, she wanted to see how she could list items in her home, which could potentially include her iconic purple chair among other keepsakes. Once again, her publicist tried to spin this saying, Wendy is getting rid of items for spring cleaning. This is what people do this time of year. It's a new chapter for Wendy and she wants new things. This is a common gesture people do and Wendy is no different. It is out with old and in with the new. Her publicist really put in the work to clean up Wendy's image, and she succeeded. It was around this time that her team hinted that they had made plans for her to star in a reality TV show, but her family kicked against this, with her brother speaking on behalf of the family. He said, This is not a woman who is in the right frame of mind to get a show going. Why are you even here? Do you see the condition she's in? Does it look like she's ready to start a podcast, for goodness sake? It doesn't. He also expressed concerns about what the reality show would mean for Wendy when she eventually gets better and is forced to deal with the fact that the whole world saw her at her lowest state. He made some pretty valid points when he said, whatever they do with it, they're gonna do. It's gonna be sad. I can't blame Wendy for anything. I want her to get better. She is not better, so I can't be mad at her for any of this. So it comes out, and what happens if Wendy is doing much, much better, right? Who wants these kinds of memories? He also insisted that while he wasn't exactly opposing the idea of a reality TV show or Wendy working, he wanted her to get better and be in a clear state of mind when she made the decision to go back and tell her story in front of the world. He said, why couldn't she just get better all the way and then do something? She can't be contemplating nothing because she can't think it through, so other people are thinking things through for her, and all this time she could have been down here recovering. I'm not gonna lie, he spoke facts here, and he was clearly trying to look out for Wendy and making sure that she knew what she was signing up for. And he also kind of confirms the speculation about how Wendy wasn't in peak health yet, and her team was trying to manipulate her so that they could profit off her. However, her team released a statement where they insisted that Wendy was eager to get back to work, saying, After taking a long break, Wendy feels some of the best days of her life were in media. She has been in media since her early 20s and wants to return to what she loves. Getting back to what she loves is something that is important to her. After the previous drama simmered down, Wendy found herself facing more mental health-related challenges, sort of. Her bank, Wells Fargo, pulled a move and locked her out of her account, blocking her from accessing her own cash, claiming she wasn't in the right headspace and wanted to slap her with a conservatorship. Kinda like what went down with Britney Spears. Wendy went to war with the bank to get her hands on her money, but it only dug her into a deeper financial hole. With her income stream cut off, she was left in a tough spot. Sure, she had a bit stashed away to tide her over, but her bank was playing keep away with her funds. To make matters worse, her ex-husband, Kevin Hunter, sued her because she was no longer paying him alimony and he wanted her money. He called out her team and accused them of being shady, saying, Wendy was in rehab and these people just stopped depositing my money cold turkey? These people have tried to starve me out. At the end of the day, I earned that money and I'm not letting them take it. I know she is not in a good place and she is surrounded by people who are taking advantage of her condition, including this so-called guardianship. 
It's kind of funny how he called out others for taking advantage of her when he was guilty of the same thing during their marriage. He blew through her cash funding his affair with Sharina, dropping nearly a mill on a house for her and setting up five doom businesses. When he couldn't squeeze any more cash out of Wendy, he tried to hit her with a lawsuit, but the court shut him down since their alimony deal stated Wendy didn't owe him squat if she left the Wendy Williams show. And speaking of Kevin, well, he has gotten his share of karma because he has since come out to admit that he has gone broke. He eventually had to come out TP publicly ask for money, saying, I have fallen behind on most of my bills. I'm behind on credit card payments because I have no money since the severance payments were suspended. My life has been greatly affected since the plaintiff stopped making payments under our settlement agreement. The fact that I am unable to sustain my life and pay my bills in order is extremely urgent to me. I cannot pay my bills and sustain my day-to-day -day living. Even more, reports had it that Sharina did not stick by him once the money stopped flowing in because she dipped as soon as the money went dry. According to reports, somewhere out there, a talk show host is having a great laugh. Her serial cheating, serial stealing ex broke up with his mistress. She was spending too much of his ill-gotten gains. Sources also confirmed that Sharina had left Kevin and moved back in with her mom. Now I am hearing that her ex-husband Kevin and Sharina are no longer together and you know what that is. Well, come on now. The money going. What you the money's gonna happen. The money is gone. Last week, the trailer for her upcoming documentary dropped, and unfortunately, she doesn't appear to be back to how she was before because she opened up by admitting that she was still broke and had lost everything she had. Put in front of a judge and given a guardian. That was when they took her away from us. I have no money, and I'm gonna tell you something. If it happens to me, it could happen to you. As her family, we were all sitting on the sidelines watching and she was crying out for help. The trailer also kind of hinted that she was still struggling with her drinking. You drink this whole thing today? Keep it there. Okay. Keep it there. But luckily, Junior is there for Wendy, and he also appeared in the trailer, saying that he didn't want his mom to work, and it kind of sounded like he didn't want her to do the documentary. My mom, she always talks about how she wants to work, but I feel as though she's worked enough. She has people around who are yes people and allowing this to continue. He also claimed that the court-ordered guardian wasn't taking care of Wendy and was leaving her open to being taken advantage of. I feel like the guardian has not done a good job of protecting my mom. My life, my life. Right now she's weak and vulnerable and she needs to be around people who aren't going to take advantage of that. I have no friends. Now, he didn't say it in the documentary trailer, but according to sources, Junior has been on the outs with his dad and he holds him accountable for everything that has happened to Wendy so far. The source claimed that Junior believes that Kevin encouraged Wendy to drink during their marriage because that made it easier for him to manipulate her for her money. He also claimed that Kevin hadn't stopped trying to take advantage of Wendy even after they got divorced, pointing out how Kevin pretty much forced Wendy to pay him alimony. Even after getting the alimony, Kevin didn't stop going after Wendy going as far as to ask her child support. Even worse, Kevin never reached out to Wendy when she was struggling, and the only thing he cares about is money. Even when everyone knew about Wendy's fight with Wells Fargo, Kevin still went ahead to sue her for money, and that was the last straw for Junior because he realized just how much his father loved Wendy's money and wasn't willing to work for his. The insider claimed that this has driven a wedge between father and son, and it's unclear if their relationship will ever be fixed or recover from this because Junior is pretty steamed about how Kevin treated his mom. The insider added that Junior still hasn't forgotten about the fight they had two years ago, after Kevin tried to keep taking advantage of Wendy, and Junior was not having that. The insider added that Junior is not afraid to go to war for his mom any day, any time. Fans are on Junior's side here, and they left comments saying, Lil Kev has numerous reasons for dropping Big Kev. This boy has been humiliated, embarrassed, and not to mention hurt as well as his mother. I'm surprised Lil Kev didn't do more. He probably has zero respect for his father since all of this stuff is playing out in the media. Him having a whole baby on his mother is embarrassing, and he has the balls to try to tell his son how to live his life. I don't condone hitting your daddy, but I kind of don't blame the young man either. And at least Kevin Jr. is nothing like his dad. Jr. is almost done with college. Mr. Senior is a big damn nothing. You go Jr., proud of you. Anywho, y'all let me know how you feel about Jr. speaking up against his dad, and then check out this next video.